I thank the member for Benelong. The question is the motion be agreed to, and I call the parliamentary secretary. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. Gallipoli is not just a place, but also now very much a condition in the human spirit so profound it empowers Australians to be their best selves. Uh, brave and patriotic, with a sense of the importance of mateship bur burning deeply within. Although by military standards the 1915 Anzac campaign was a disaster and an epic one at that, the symbolism of Gallipoli and what those hardy and heroic diggers achieved truly united Australia and Australians like nothing else could have possibly at the time. Uh, looking back now, we should not only be proud but also thankful, eternally thankful, uh, for the deeds which established the ethos which is held so dear by all who wear a military uniform of our country today. Many, if not most people, certainly generational Australians, have a relative who fought in and possibly never returned from the First World War. The 1914-18 conflict touched so many families, robbing us of a generation of men and forever changing our nation. An ancestor of mine, Morris Joseph Curran, was one of those who made the ultimate sacrifice. In the words of St John, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. On 14 October 1922, his mother, Jane of Cooleman, signed for his memorial plaque, this memorial plaque, the war medal no one wanted to receive. Mara born farmer Morris enlisted with his younger brother, Jack, on 27 March 1916. They, like many others across the Riverina and throughout Australia, no doubt felt a deep sense of obligation to join the war effort after what happened at Gallipoli. News from the Dardanelles over those eight fateful months told the grim tale of the hardship, service and loss endured, contributed and suffered by the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps following those original landings in the pre-dawn darkness on that momentous day, forever burned in the consciences of bereaved yet grateful nations on either side of the Tasman, 25 April 1915. Morris of the 36th Battalion fell during the Battle of Passchendaele in Belgium on 12 October 1917, killed in action with three other digger mates when a shell landed amongst them just as they were about to hop over. He was aged just 30. His lifeless body fell against or past his brother Jack, later awarded a military medal for bravery as a stretcher bearer, who buried his poor brother and then had the awful duty to write to his mother in Cooleman and tell her what happened. Another brother, Leslie William Curran, was recruited during Australia's longest recruiting march, 350 miles from Wagga Wagga to Sydney uh, in 1915-16. This epic walk will be re-enacted a century on thanks to the uh, efforts of an energetic Southern Highlands group uh, led by Graham Brown, Rhonda Van Zeller and OJ Rushton, setting off from Wagga Wagga on 5 September en route to Campbelltown. Les Curran was also awarded a military medal for gallantry at Wiz Farm east of uh, Watchsate, known to the troops as White Sheet, on the night of 3 March 1918. They were brave diggers, those Currans. Fortunately, Les made it home, albeit as an invalid, in 1919, but was well enough to serve in World War II and uh, died aged 64 in Marupna, Victoria, in 1958. A memorial plaque was issued after the First World War to the next of kin of all British and Empire Service personnel killed. The plaques were made of bronze and were often referred to as the, the dead man's penny or widow's penny because of their resemblance to the significantly smaller penny coin. 1,355,000 plaques were issued and 450 tonnes of bronze were used in their production. Deputy Speaker, how very sad. A total of 8,709 plaques went to Australians, lost as a result of the Gallipoli campaign. The long casualty list included many Riverina boys, from the foothills in the Snowy Mountains uh, in the east to the Red Soil Plains in the west and everywhere in between, who, in the immortal words of Lawrence Binion, went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. On the centenary of uh, Anzac Day, they remembered those hardy heroes at Wagga Wagga and West Wylong, at Griffith and Gundagai, at Tulimba and Tumut, and Adelong and Area Park. The centenary of Anzac was commemorated enthusiastically right throughout the Riverina. Springdale, a tiny village just outside Tamora, sent 34 young men to World War I. Ten never returned. As a percentage of fallen, this sadly ranks Springdale amongst the highest of any community in the Commonwealth, 
Another such unfortunate community is Tumbarumba. Uh, on Anzac night, Springdale paid tribute to those brave forefathers uh, who served. Beautiful silver pin badges were presented to descendants, many of whom still live in the area. People came from near and far, nearly 250 cramming inside the small memorial hall to dine on a sumptuous Springdale roast and have Anzac pudding for dessert. The fare corresponded with that provided in the three farewell functions and the three welcome home functions held in the very same hall between 1915 and 1920. What a truly memorable evening it was. Country hospitality at its very best. Vietnam veteran retired Colonel Pat Thorne AM did a splendid job with all the arrangements. The entertainment was simply magnificent. Lachlan Reekstein singing It's a Long Way to Tipperary, Jenny Kotzer reciting a beautiful French poem, and Stephanie Elliott doing a wonderful job with Joan of Arc. More than 15,000, a record turnout, attended Wagga Wagga's Anzac centenary commemorations along Baylor Street. What a remarkable parade it was. Kapuka Commandant Colonel Steve Jobson gave an inspiring address, and I intend to table that address at the end of this speech. Uh, the RSL Rural Commemorative Youth Choir sang beautifully, and personnel from our city's three defence bases did themselves proud. I am very fortunate uh, to live in a free and democratic country, as we all are, and this is thanks to the Anzacs, those who fought at Gallipoli, those who have followed, that long line of khaki uh, who have done our country proud. Uh, and I am proud to also represent in this place Kapuka the home of the soldier, and uh, where, as I say, Colonel Steve Jobson is now the commandant, and what a fine speech he gave on, uh, on, on Anzac Day, one of the most finest addresses I have ever heard. Lessons learned from our involvement in conflicts the world over, and which first came to light during that ill-fated Dardanelles foray, uh, are that the pursuit of peace often comes at a terrible cost, and as a nation we must always stand ready to protect ourselves and those who rely on us. In commemorating the centenary of Anzac, Australians and those across the Tasman, our everlasting New Zealand friends, share a unique bond which will forever remain unbroken. People from all countries know, admire and respect the enduring qualities of the Anzacs, the core values of courage, initiative, respect and teamwork. Over the years, Australia's servicemen and women have always put the interests of maintaining and at times restoring freedom and the inherent risks uh, associated with going on active duty above their own personal safety. And uh, you and I, Deputy Speaker, saw that firsthand when last year we took part in the Australian Defence Force parliamentary program and went to Afghanistan. We saw that firsthand. We saw uh, how brave those men and women are and will always continue to be. Long lines of crosses, some marked, others not, in military cemeteries and row upon row of names on the Roll of Honour at the Australian War Memorial here in Canberra and on monuments uh, right across the Riverina are grim reminders that our nation and region have paid a heavy price for upholding our ideals, our gallantry and our willingness to help others. In keeping the peace, our Air Force, Army and Navy personnel, as well as those wonderful nurses and medical staff, have done us proud and this is why we should always honour their memory on this uh, very special Anzac Day this year and indeed every day, for our way of life has been made possible only because of their sacrifices on our behalf. And if I could, uh, uh, with a little indulgence, read a poem which was written in the Anzacs March Again, another verse, by Cecil S. Watts in 1944. But it uh, brings home just how important Anzac Day and the Riverina is. We are at a battle station where the restless tropic sea thunders on the reefs of coral, a threat of storms to be. With the jungle close behind us, we are resting by our guns, and I'm thinking it is springtime on the Riverina runs. They'll be busy now landmarking, clipping ears and snipping tails till the tar-splashed wood is polished along the holding rails, and I'm wishing I could saddle up to ride the plains and sing all my praise of Riverina, Riverina in the spring. There's a group of wooden crosses where the shore and jungle meet, from village to inland village, the primitive war drums beat, and I'm thinking of a Southland guarded by this aerodrome of the green and gold of springtime round my Riverina home. There'll be blossoms on the wattle, the old pepperina tree will be shading Bluey's kennel with the wish that dog was here with me, and the bush birds in the timber will make the echoes ring with their songs of Riverina, Riverina in the spring. We have heard before the message carried to us by the drums, and we're ready for the foeman, no matter how he comes. We have held this southward sally, and those of us who died 
are buried neath those crosses by the restless topic, tropic tide. It is not for martial glory that those hearts are sleeping there. They also love their homeland, Australia, free and fair. And I fancy they are sharing the joy that memory brings as I think of Riverina, Riverina in the spring. Lest we forget, Deputy Speaker, and if I could table Colonel Steve Jobson's speech from Anzac Day uh, ceremony at Wagga Wagga uh, this year, I would Leave be granted. appreciative. Leave is granted. I thank, thank the Parliamentary you, Secretary.